We're following the latest developments on Pope Francis as the global sex abuse crisis plagues the, the Catholic Church. There are growing questions over what Francis knew concerning abuse allegations. Former Vatican official Archbishop Vigano has demanded the Pope resign. He published a letter accusing Francis of covering up sexual abuse claims. And now a group of Catholic women are writing to the Pope to demand answers. And one of those women is Catherine Jean Lopez. She's a senior fellow at the National Review Institute, and she's also the editor at large of National Review Magazine and joins me here. Thank you so much for joining me. So let me get your take on this letter from um, uh, Vigano or Vigano, I can't remember. Vigano. Vigano, right. What'd you, what'd you make of that letter? Well, it's shocking when, when you read the letter. And, um, but, but the takeaway is, is this true or not? Right. Because this is one man's, quote, testimony. Um, and I, I don't put it in quotes because, because it's a question. It was mm -hmm. essentially a memo of his, his testament to, to what um, his version of the story. Right. And um, on his uh, way back from Ireland this weekend, reporters asked him, he famously does these, these uh, press conferences on planes, yes. and he said he was, wouldn't say a word. Right. And that left, frankly, a lot of Catholics heartbroken. <laughs> you know, we're mad and upset and humiliated. And, and, um, and so a group of, of Catholic women, there are about 60 signatures at the moment, it'll be released uh, a little later. Some of them seminary professors, mm -hmm. um, a lot of them mothers and, and, and daughters of the church are simply asking, is what the archbishop said true or not? Right. Um, as we try to get to the bottom of what's been going on, what is at the root of the mismanagement and the corruption and, and the evil that we've been seeing in the Catholic Church, it's truly anyone who read any of the headlines or any of the P Pennsylvania grand jury mm -hmm. report, it's just de demonic. Yeah. We believe in evil and this is evil, you know? Um, and so it has to be rooted out and we have to get to the bottom of this. So, so. The big question right now is, what did Pope, Pope Francis know? What did Pope Benedict know? And and um, who needs to resign? Right. There are all these questions, um, but but we're on a long fact-finding um, mission right I, now. I think you know his reaction on the plane stood out because so often he's very open right. in those question and answers, and I, I think this is probably the first time that he his response was essentially, "Well, you read it and tell me what you think," which I thought was odd. It it was it was bewildering to yeah. a lot of people, frankly. The one thing that is consistent, actually, w with Pope Francis in that, is that he there there there's a divide in the church that didn't start yesterday, you know, mm -hmm. or this weekend with the, the with the release of the Vigano letter. Um, he Pope Francis likes to have that out in the open, and so you really do see sort of a civil war going on. Right. Um, you know, it's one of so the let's talk a little bit about that because it has been on those plain interviews where the president, where sorry, the Pope has said things about uh, uh, gay people, has said things about abortions that certainly. Um, uh, display a more compassionate mm -hmm. point of view than we've seen from the church before. Many have seen him as a more progressive, mm -hmm. a refreshing sort of pope. Some people find that very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And there has been a suggestion that perhaps Vigano's motives are not completely sincere. Right. He's, um, he leans more conservative and maybe there's politics at play right. here. Now, and that's the church at, at its worst, frankly, right. when politics gets involved. Yeah. And, um, and all of what you just said is, is entirely true. Um, Pope Francis likes to make people uncomfortable. Yeah. And he also, I think, knows that he has a gift for people to take a second look at the church yeah. um, and see it as more compassionate and see it as more, more than just knows to things, yeah. right? Prohibitions and things. Um, but he also knows that there is this divide about questions of celibacy and the priesthood and the male priesthood, all these things, and he wants to have those out in the open. So people going after one another is actually consistent with Pope Francis. Right. So, but here's the thing about Pope Francis is that despite the um, sort of, like I said, more compassionate outlook on certain topics, he really hasn't changed much in right, the church. Right, he hasn't exactly. changed doctrine at all. So why do you think there's this fierce divide? The church really is the same church as it was before him. Right, right. It absolutely is. But for decades, there has there have been these these divides going on behind the scenes right. where people are arguing about marriage and communion and the, uh, all these things, yeah. all these neuralgic issues that really 
hit the most sensitive topics. Um, and they've been hap happening in silos and, you know, in, in theology departments and things like that. Mm -hmm. And he now it's happening on the front page and on Twitter and everywhere else. And he constantly in his sermons and things talks about the, the importance of, of just shining light on in dark places right. and knowing and acknowledging the sin and the weakness. And so that's what's happening right out in the open right now. Um, and I think I think he sees himself as the father sort of letting this all, he can, mm -hmm. let the family's problems come to the surface. Mm -hmm. So now we can sort them out. Now the big question is, are we going to sort them out or not? Right. Um, and, and the purpose of that letter is, because we really need to, <laughs> to find out what he knows. Yeah. Um, and when Pope Benedict resigned, there was this dossier that um, we knew about but was never released. And Pope Francis um, has read it to the best of our knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, we want to see that, but just let it let it all come out. You know, this has been a tough time for Catholics. I, I think it is every time there's sort of a flare up in terms of accusations and sexual uh, abuse. But this Pennsylvania grand jury report was really, really stunning um, right. and very disappointing. I grew up Catholic. I am Catholic. Uh, my mother's a Catholic school teacher. She didn't go to mass after the uh, yeah. report was released. Um, you know, what do you say to Catholics who are questioning whether or not this is a church that they really want to be? be a part of the, the demonic evil acts that we saw described in that Pennsylvania mm. gen, grand jury report are not the church. The church doesn't belong to evil men. Mm. The church is yours as much as it's cardinal worlds, you know, and this is a moment for lay people, for people in the pews to realize that and become more a part of the solution. Um, you know, when there are a lot of active eyes <laughs> Things like this don't happen um, as much, you know. It's a healthier environment, and we all have to contribute to the healthy environment. There have to be resignations and reforms and all of our mm -hmm. rest, but there's a role for everybody to play. And I've been heartened by, I was at St. Patrick's this morning, mass was, was full for the 7 a.m. mass on a weekday. On, on the weekend, I went to a suburban parish in New York. The, the responses were strong. The priest was very candid. Um, I think it helps when you have a spiritual father, you know, mm -hmm. among you, um, who you're encouraging to. Mm -hmm. There's so many holy priests. So, so that that I, I I really see Catholics appreciating that a little bit more mm -hmm. in in their tears and anger, and because it's it's obviously a devastating situation. Yeah, Catherine Jean Lopez. Thank you so much. Thank you.